Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from DP Review, and we've got Alex Mitchell with us today. Alex, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on the show, Chris. Absolutely, man. Now, Alex is a good friend of ours, but you're also a Hollywood caliber sound guy. You've worked on a lot of big productions. Oh, shucks. You have. What we're gonna do today is, is a basic tutorial on audio and microphones, and not just, not just different kinds of microphones, but how to use them, where to place them, and what techniques work well, right? Yeah, I'm excited to show your viewers just how technique can get you better results than just buying really expensive gear. There's a lot of little tips and tricks that when you employ them will give you, you know, incredible sound for not a huge budget. Yeah, I mean, not everybody has a Hollywood audio budget, right, Alex? Absolutely. I mean, everybody expects Hollywood level results, but you don't need to have that level of experience. You just need to follow some simple guidelines that'll get you good audio. Perfect. And audio is so important in a video production, right? I mean, if you've got terrible audio, no one's going to watch that video. Exactly. Right? Everybody wants to hear what you're saying because the message is the important thing. Uh, this is by far one of our most requested tutorials, and I think you'll all find it very handy whether you're doing home videos, vlogging, or high end productions. So, a lot of videographers and one-man band setups will come to me and say, Alex, the sound doesn't sound like I'd kind of want it to. It doesn't sound clear or present. And when I look at their setups, a lot of times they have a Rode video mic or some other kind of onboard camera microphone recording most of their dialogue. And that's not great for every scenario. So what we're simulating here is Chris in front of a noisy Calgary highway. And I want to compare sort of the best quality shotgun that we would use in this scenario versus, you know, sort of a more affordable Rode onboard lavalier setup that's right on Chris's body. All right, everybody, so in this example, I've got my lav right on my chest, but we also have a shotgun mic right at the camera simulating an onboard camera shotgun. It's pointing right at me. But more importantly, my garden's not doing very good this year. I don't know what it is. I bought a Korean maple. I planted it right in the middle of the patio, and the leaves are going brown. I don't know if it's getting too much sun or not enough sun. All right, well, yeah, let's go look for some locations to test out different mic pickup patterns for different uh, reverb spaces. Well, I mean, what about the porta potty? What mic would you use in there? Oh, cool. I think I'd rather use a hose. <laughs> so, Alex, when it comes to the world of audio, there isn't one microphone that can do it all, right? We've exactly. got a lot of different pieces. What's going on here in your hand right now? So, the microphone I've got in my hand is called a shotgun microphone. Okay. And it's sort of like a telephoto lens in that you can really zoom into the thing that you're recording audio from, whether it's, uh, you know, someone speaking or if it's a particular thing that makes an interesting sound. So, it really isolates the sound into a tight cone. What is the benefit of that? Well, so if there are, you know, a lot of other extraneous noises you don't want to record like the kids or the traffic or the dogs or whatever yeah. it sort of isolates your your sound from those other contaminants gotcha yeah okay but not great once you start going indoors and get a lot of reverb and other kind of bouncing around like echoes and stuff exactly okay. so not your best microphone indoors and it's not even the first lilac that i bought because the first one i bought did the same thing so when you do go indoors, okay. you want to have something called a cardioid microphone. Okay. And it's called cardio because it has a heart-shaped bubble of sound that it records. This makes it very good for recording indoors in sort of a, a bouncy, echoey environment. Okay. But it also means that you want to be closer to the thing you're recording. So if the shotgun microphone is like a 200 millimeter lens, this is like a 35 or 50. Gotcha. So you have to be a little bit closer with you it. You don't have to be as precise though with your cone of sound? Exactly. You can sort of uh, be a little bit off axis or record multiple people and you don't have to be gotcha. laser precise precision right on their mouths or anything. Now here we've got the Rode Video Micro, obviously a lot smaller, way less money, but this would be a similar kind of microphone. Okay? Exactly, yeah. It's the very same kind of pickup pattern, um, used for slightly different context. This one seems like it's designed more to be on camera, yeah. but you know, if you had it closer to the talent, you could certainly get an interesting sound out of it. Another problem that I'm having, I planted a dwarf lilac and I mean that thing is just like it was doing okay, now it's drying up. So the microphone I want to show you now is called the lavalier and it's very different than most microphones because you actually mount it on the talent making noise. So right. for instance you're wearing one right now that's right. made by Rode. This one is from Sanken and the other one that you have in your hand is from Aperture. Yeah, super tubal Aperture. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but the first two microphones that we have, those are what we call like a directional microphone. Like they're mounted on a boom or mounted on camera and you have to point them at your subject. Exactly. Now the big benefit of this is if I'm wearing it on my body, I don't have to worry about where it's pointing. So if you want to get a microphone close to somebody and get good audio, and these certainly deliver that, why aren't these the ultimate mic? What are the downsides with using a lav mic? The big risk with a lavalier microphone is you're hiding it under clothing usually, okay. and you're trying to keep it out of sight. And so sometimes you get clothing wrestle, sometimes you'll have talent that isn't aware of it and they'll hit the microphone. Right, like I do chest. this all the time. Exactly. I like or... to do this to Jordan a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and it can become a big problem. So, like clothing jackets. Yeah, like, like if we if we go in for a hug here, you'll notice that the sound is really muffled and rustly, so it just right, doesn't really right. sound great. And I know that seems like a silly example, but for example, if you had two actors on a movie set and they're gonna hug or whatever or mm -hmm. fight or whatever, move around, do an action scene this isn't gonna cut it. So Chris, one of the things that I tell people when they ask me how to get good sound is just two simple rules. The first rule is you wanna get the microphone close, okay. but the second rule, which is sort of germane to what we're experiencing right now, is you wanna record in a quiet location without a lot of contamination. If so you look for example, this, you, don't, you don't want a lawnmower in the background? Not really uh, ideal. Okay. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you can get away with a lot, but you can't get away with that. So the incredible irony of doing an audio episode in a park where currently they're doing a bit of landscaping work, not really an ideal scenario. You need to wear headphones too when you're recording yeah. audio. If you're not listening to what you're recording, sometimes you just tune out background noises that are really problematic in post-production. Yeah, I mean, even like $5 earbuds are better than nothing, hey? Exactly. We often get airplanes up ahead, or maybe the batteries on your mic die and you don't know, or like we've talked about, you accidentally bump it and hit it, and if you're not monitoring that, you're gonna have a nasty surprise when you get home to edit. Exactly, it would be like using your camera and not even looking at the monitor. Right. All right, so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about lavalier placement, because a good lavalier in the wrong place sounds a lot worse than a bad lavalier in the right place. Hmm. And normally we think about this spot right here, sort of around your chest bone as being the right spot. Right, so if it's positioned there, it doesn't matter where I turn my head, you pretty much get a nice, even sound out of my voice. Exactly. So what are some examples of bad places to put this? If I have the microphone too low, we get a little bit more background noise and just the, the voice is fainter, it doesn't right. sound very present. So if I'm talking now and the mic's really low, you're just not quite gonna hear it to that same sort of strong degree. Exactly, and if we've got it too high, we get way too much throat in it. That's interesting. So yeah, like if you put it on a t-shirt or something up really high or on a lapel really high, you're gonna get bad sound out of that as well. Exactly. The other spots that are really not great are on here on the lapel, which funny enough, the microphone's named after, but if you turn away from this microphone. Right, so if I'm talking to somebody over here, you probably can't hear me very well. And then when I turn to mic over here, all of a sudden I'm louder. That'd be a real pain to edit afterwards. Exactly. And again, just for comparison, this is the spot where it sounds best. Right, so always put it right at the chest bone. Gotcha, that's the best place for the mic. So just to kind of stress the importance of mic placement, over here, I've got the Aperture Deity V Alav. It's a very affordable microphone. Over here, I've got the Sankin COS, and it's 10 times the price. Now, both microphones are gonna pick up my voice, but if I turn my body like this, the aperture now is in the proper placement. It's in between the audio path. And as I talk to the camera, it's gonna sound great, and the Sankin's just not gonna pick up very well. So again, it's just to stress the point that whether your mic is expensive or affordable, the key thing is get it in the right position. So Alex, tell us about this little experiment they're about to do here. All right, now I'm gonna sound like a broken record, Chris, but a microphone that's close to your subject is gonna sound better than a more expensive microphone farther away. It's just how audio works. Right, now this is quite an expensive microphone, right? I mean, what do you have here? So in this blimp, I've got a Sankin CS3E. It's sort of covered by a wind jammer. That's what the fur is for, okay. is to just slow down air so we don't get that rumble. And we're gonna be comparing it to the video micro, which is gonna be over top of your head there. Right, mm. now this is gonna be far away at the camera position. And, and this is the video micro from Rode. I mean, we ought to appreciate This is first off like a 20 fold price difference in comparison. It's, it's way less It's a very money. affordable intro right. microphone for a lot of people starting out. And one of the things I want to point out is we've got this mounted on a stand because I know a lot of people are sort of run and gun, one man band. Right. And just because you don't have a lot of manpower doesn't mean that you can't get good audio. So right. just take a microphone and mount it on the end of a pole and just get it close to your subject right. and you're good to go. Get an affordable, portable boom. You can set it up even by yourself. And as we're hopefully going to hear, it's going to make a huge difference, uh, especially when you consider the price point. All right, so first thing I want to mention is you're hearing me with the audio here on the video micro right above my head from Rode. And what we're doing here is just showing you a comparison of how important it is to get a mic close to you as you're talking versus as I now go over the mic that's the sank and pointing at me from Jordan's camera position and how that sounds different. And having the mic close really eliminates a lot of the ambient noise, whereas having that mic farther away and not placing in the right direction gets you a lot of ambient noise and a lot of distractions. All right, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. I think we learned a lot. Uh, and I just want to also state, like this video today wasn't really about trying to show the quality differences between a $2,000 microphone and an $80 microphone. That's not what we're trying to do. But I think at the same time, it really did illustrate that you can do a lot with an $80 microphone if you use proper technique, right? Absolutely. That, that's the key? 
Yeah, just in the same way that you can get a fantastic image from a plastic Fantastic 50 mil, you can get amazing sound from the right tools used in the right way. Right. You don't have to be going out and spending huge bucks on big shotgun microphones or really expensive lavaliers. As long as you're just using these tools in their appropriate place and time, you're just going to get great sound. It's been enlightening that you don't have to spend a ton of money. And I think a lot of people are going to get out there, they're going to get a basic microphone, stick it on their camera and get out shooting. But inevitably, they're going to run into some bad situations where the sound is just not working. Working. And so I think this is great. You don't have to spend a ton of money, but you definitely got to invest a little bit of time and knowledge into learning some good techniques, right? Exactly. Yeah. The fundamentals of sound are the same, whether or not you're doing narrative, documentary, vlogging, and all these tools are good at doing what they do, but they just need to be used correctly. And right. so, you know, you can't really expect to have even a great microphone on camera and get the same kind of sound that you're seeing from high end bloggers or from Hollywood. Right. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for helping us out. And, you know, I do want to say folks, I mean, of course, leave comments below. Let us know what you think. Uh, tweet to us, check us out on Instagram, but Alex is going to be seeing a lot of these comments as well. So if you have questions or need some clarification, feel free to ask that below mm -hmm. and Alex will help us uh, get back to you. But thank you so much for joining us. It was a lot of fun. Anytime, Chris. Uh, last thing I want to mention too, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more advanced audio techniques or more direct comparisons between the gear, we can certainly do that. Let us know in the comments as well and we'll get to that. Otherwise, we'll see you all soon.